Creating a great thumbnail for your YouTube video can make or break its performance. Today, we'll look at how to create YouTube thumbnails in Canva. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're looking at how to make YouTube thumbnails in Canva. Now there are many different styles of thumbnails. Today I'll be talking about thumbnails for these vlog lifestyle types of videos that are very popular on YouTube these days. We'll be looking at three real world examples and we'll see how we can recreate them in Canva. If you have a YouTube thumbnail style you wanna see, leave a comment down below and I'll try to include it in an upcoming video. For our first thumbnail, we'll look at this channel from Bria Jones. Now a good exercise is to look at a channel's thumbnails and try to identify the common design patterns that they use. This really helps you plan what you wanna do for your own thumbnail. So scrolling through here, I can see several common elements in the thumbnails. Obviously it usually features the main person themselves. And I can see there's a microphone, she seems to be sitting in her room. It very clearly tells us that this is a podcast style video. You can also notice that the text is very minimalist. Usually it's white with a slight drop shadow behind it to add a little bit of contrast. And the color style is also very muted. There's a couple examples of a bright blue shirt here or a sweater, but for the most part, it's pretty neutral. Now, if I scroll down to some of her older videos, we see examples of her being separated from her background a little bit more. She's outlined and her background is a little more faded to add some contrast. This is a very common technique that we'll see repeatedly in this genre of thumbnails. So let's try to recreate this one here, rewire your brain. And really the only asset I'm going to use is I'm going to try to find a picture of a woman talking into a microphone in her room. For your own videos, you can take photos of yourself to use in your thumbnails. Now I got this image here and I think this is a good image to use as a basis for our thumbnail. So I've opened Canva here and I'm going to click create design. Now I've created YouTube thumbnails in the past so it remembers that template here. But if you don't see it, you can just type YouTube in the search bar here. And I'll just add thumbnail. And it comes up here, so I'll click on YouTube thumbnail. Now I want to upload the main image I'm going to use in this composition. I'll click upload files. I'll find that on my computer, select it. And then I'll click open. So now that my image is uploaded, I'll click on it. And that adds it to my canvas. Now looking back to our reference photo here, one of the key effects is outlining the main person. So let's see how we can do that in Canva. So with my image selected, I'm gonna click edit image. And then I'm going to click BG remover. So this will remove the background. And we can see it did a really good job. Now sometimes with a white background, it's hard to see what it actually did. What I like to do is change the background of my document. So I just click on the background here. I'll click a color. And we're just trying to pick any color that will contrast well with our main image. Let me pick purple here. This isn't gonna be in our final thumbnail. I'm just using this to see how good a job our background remover did. So zooming in, it seems pretty good. I don't really see any mistakes at all. Now let's put the white line around her. To do that, I can click edit image again. Then I'm going to click shadows. And shadows also has an outline feature. So I'll click outline here. And we see we have an outline of our character. Let me change the size. I can also change the color. Let's make it white. So there we have a white outline of our person. I'll click off of it. Now I'm gonna put our original photo back on the canvas again. So let's put it back there. Now it's in front of our person. To see the order of our objects and our design, we can click position here. And then we have layers over here. So select layers if it's not selected already. And this top one right now is the background and the bottom one is the isolated person. Let me drag the person above. So now we have our outline person above the background. Let me select the background and let me resize it so it covers the whole canvas. Now I'll select the person and I'll make her bigger. We can make it a little bit bigger. It won't actually matter because she'll be covering herself totally. Let's make it a little bit bigger. If you hold control, that turns off snapping so you can place things a little bit more easily. And I think that's a pretty good positioning of it. So we have a really nice separation between our foreground and our background, but something that needs to be adjusted is the lighting. So to make sure I'm selecting my background layer, once again, I'll go to position. And I'll select the background layer here. Then I'll click edit image. And then I'll click adjust. What I want to do is make the background brighter. So down here I can adjust the brightness and I can dial it up. I'll make it extreme so you can see the effect. Notice how it's just the background that's being affected. Our foreground is not because I'm only selecting the background layer. We can also toggle the temperature, which is the warmness and coolness of the image. So I can drag this slider here. Maybe I want to make it a little bit cooler. Let's go more extreme maybe around there. Scrolling down, we have other options and you can experiment with them in your own thumbnails to see how they make it look. A lot of times the background of a thumbnail will have less clarity, so that way we focus more on the foreground character. I'll reduce it a lot so you can see the effect. I don't wanna go 100%, but let's just reduce it a little bit, maybe minus 30 or something. 
And we could also add a slight vignette that's going to darken the edges a little bit. It just helps bring a little more focus to the center of the image. So I'll click off. And those are the adjustments for our background. Now we should adjust our foreground character. So I'll click her. If you're not sure if she's actually selected, click position. And then make sure she's selected there in the layers. And once again, I can click edit image. This time, let's try using a filter. We can see the filters down here. If we click see all, we can view more. And I can click through them and we can see the effect they're having. Some are definitely much more extreme than others. We can always adjust the intensity too. So if we like something, but we don't want it to be that powerful, we can dial it down a little bit. I like this one called Capri. Let me dial up the intensity a little bit. So let's use this one. I'll click off. And with this filter, we've made the woman in the foreground stand out a little bit more from the background. Now let's add the text. And before I do this, I'm actually going to lock my foreground and background just so I don't accidentally click on them and move them around. It can be a little frustrating sometimes. So I'll go to position, click on background, then I'll lock it again. So now I can't actually select it and that's going to make it a little more easy to move other things around on my canvas. So I'll add the text box. I'll click add text box. And the main text was rewire your brain. I'll change the size here. In our original photo, we can see that it was white with a black outline. So let's make it white. And then to give the outline, we can click effects and click outline. I'll make it black here, make it a little bit bigger. Let's look through the fonts. I don't know what the exact font was, but I found this one called League Spartan, which I like, and it looks kind of similar. So let's select that. Now the text is also bent here. So let's see how we can bend it. Once again, with our text selected, if we click effects, down at the bottom, we can see this curve option. So I'll click curve. And if we scroll down, there's a slider here. We can make it more or less curved. It's a pretty subtle curve. So let's put it like around there, not too extreme. And I'll put it in the center there. Now we also have some other text down here. Let's add another text box. I'll paste my text in there. It's pretty big. Let's change the font. We'll do Roboto bold. Let's reduce it, widen it up a little bit. So let's make it italic and we'll make it white. A little bit bigger again. Now I also see a drop shadow here on the text. So let's add a drop shadow to our text. With the text selected, we click effects and then we can add shadow here. I'll make it darker. We can adjust the blur. I'll add some more blur, less transparency. And I think the shadow makes it jump out much more now. There's still one other element we need, which is these squiggly lines here. And actually Canva has those as elements. So I'll go to elements and I'll type something in the search box like hand-drawn squiggle. Usually Canva is pretty good at finding things when you describe them like this. Let's click see all here. I'll scroll through. This one here looks pretty good. I'll click on it. I think this one's a little bit too round. I want more of an ovalish one. So let's try this one instead. Let's delete this other one. Let's make this yellow. And I think that's actually much closer to what is in the thumbnail. And then we have this other one over here. Let's see if we can find that. I search for hand-drawn underline instead. Let's try this one. This one looks pretty close. And let's make it yellow. And there we have our final result. So all it really took was just editing a few images and adding some text effects to get this minimalist look here. Now let's look at a second example from this channel by Sophia Nygaard. And once again, we can look through the thumbnails and observe some of the common patterns we see. Quite often our channel host is in the middle of the image. And I'm seeing a lot of the designs have kind of this left and right composition. One image is on the left and there's a different image on the right. So as I was scrolling down, one I really liked was this Ikea target one over here. So let's try to make a thumbnail in this style. Now for this, I started by identifying some of the assets I would need. So I Googled the Ikea and Target logos and I downloaded them to my computer. I also looked for some interiors of the stores. So here's some interiors of Target. And I also found a photo of a woman with black hair that we can use for our model. And once again, if you're the star of your video, you can take photos of yourself and use them in the thumbnails. So let's go back to Canva and create a YouTube thumbnail here. My search history remembers it, so I'll just click that. And I'm going to upload my images. So I'll click uploads and upload files. I put all the assets here in a folder. I'll just select all of them. Now I'll click open. Now, once again, let's isolate our person from the background. So I'll click on the woman here, make it a little bit bigger. Let's click edit image background remover. So I'm gonna change the background color again, just so it's easy to see what it did. Let's make it purple here. Now I think there's a little bit too much random stray hair going on here. Let's add an outline to it and see what it actually looks like. So I'll click edit image again. I'll go to shadows and I'll click outline again and I'll make the outline white. So let me select the outline here. Now, as I said, it looks kind of messy with all the stray hair here. We can actually clean up the background removal operation. So with my image selected here, I'll click edit image 
And then with the BG remover, I can click these controls here. So I'll click this, configure. And now this gives me the ability to edit what the background remover did. So the main thing I want to do is erase more. So I'm going to click erase here. And I can start taking out a lot of these stray hairs. If you erase too much like that, you can always click restore and paint it back in. It's kind of a back and forth process to add in and remove things. If your brush is too big or too small, you can resize it over here. I'll make it big just to take out the main things. Sometimes the easiest way to get into a corner is to erase too much. So to erase into the corner there and then to actually click restore and paint back in sideways. It's really going to depend on the photograph you have and how cleanly cut the hair is out from the background. There's some details that could be improved, but I think for a YouTube thumbnail is good enough. Looking at our reference photo here, you can see she's touching the top and bottom of the frame, which allows the separation of the left and right images. So in my example here, I'm also going to make her touch the top and bottom. Maybe we can also add a filter to her. So let's go to edit image, filters, maybe this Bali one I'll try. We can always change this later, but I kind of like that. Let's keep that there. Now I want to bring in the backgrounds. So I have my IKEA background here. I'll click on that and it adds it to my image. So I'll resize it. And what I'm going to want to do now is click position. I'm going to click on layers. I'm going to put it to the back. And I'll kind of get it where I want. Find an interesting part of the photo. I think those beds and stuff tell us that it's IKEA. So now it's bringing the target photo. So I'll just click on it once and that brings it into our image. And once again, we're going to have to put it into the back. So I'll go to position, drag it to the back. Let's find a good place for it. I like how the aisle is shown there. Just resize it a little bit. So there we go. We have our left and right background images. Now in our reference photo here, we see there's kind of a blue gradient over the IKEA side and a red gradient over the target side. Let's add those in. So I'll search the elements here and I'll search for gradient. And what you'll see is this purple gradient here, but actually we can change the color of that. So I'll click on it. I'll bring it into my image here. And I can resize it. Now we want it behind the woman, so let's go to position. Just drag it below. And we also want to change the color to blue. So I'll click this color swatch here and I'll change it to blue. That seems like a pretty good blue. I'll hold alt and drag to copy this. And then I'll rotate it around. Let's get it in the right position there. Now this side is going to be red, so I'll click the color swatch again. And let's make it a red color. That seems pretty good. If you don't want the gradient to be so strong on the edge, you can change the transparency. So we can reduce it a little bit there. Next, we're going to want to add in our logos. So in my uploads, I'll click the IKEA logo. Let's resize it. Rotate it. And I'll add a drop shadow. I'll click edit image with my IKEA logo selected. And shadows. Drop. Right about there sounds good. I think we need a little more blur than the default value. So there we have IKEA. Now I couldn't really find a good example of the word target, but I could find the target logo. Let me click that and bring it in. I'll add the word target myself. So I'll click text, add a text box, target. So I'll make the text white, just change the font. I like this one here. With my text selected, I'll add the effect of a drop shadow, make it black, add some blur, make it a little darker. Let's do the same thing for the image logo. Edit image, shadows, drop. Now if I go to a position here with target and the actual icon of target selected, I can press control G and now they're in a group and now I can actually rotate them together. So let me bring it over here. I'll click the rotate icon and they're rotating and moving together. Make it a little bit bigger, put it there. And finally in the bottom we have this other text, retail manipulation. So I'll add a text box in. There's an outline of it. It's kind of like this thick red color here. So I know the exact font, but I think it's pretty good right there. Turn off the bold. Now, one other thing I noticed is that her outline is actually a little bit faded. It's not as strong as we have it in our example. So this is something we can go back and edit. So with the woman selected, I'll click edit image again. And remember the white outline is one of our shadows. So the outline is selected. Maybe I'll actually change it to a glow effect. Let me click glow here. I'll play with the blur amount and the intensity here. We can change how subtle we want the effect to be. I think there is pretty good. So there's our final result of this thumbnail. Our final vlogger is Tina Young with almost 4 million subscribers. So I'll look through her thumbnails and see which aspects of them jump out to me. Definitely, I would say this is more of a maximalist approach. Our first thumbnail, remember, was more minimalist. This one is just really showing us tons of information. Lots of very eye-catching and colorful imagery. Let's take this thumbnail here about viral TikTok recipes. It jumped out to me and it seems like it did pretty well with her audience in terms of views. 
and I'll download assets related to this thumbnail here. So I can see there's lots of elements here. We have the TikTok logo. We have some kind of pasta dish in the back with noodles. Of course, we have the host of the channel here featured very prominently. So I created a new document here and I'll upload the assets that I found. And I just found these on Google Images and Pinterest and things like that. Now, one thing you'll notice about this design is this pasta in the left. Notice how it's masked against the background here. It's not actually removed fully from the background because you can see the table and the other items in it, but it is kind of cut off there. Let me show you how you can do that in Canva. So I found this pasta dish online. Let me add it in here. I think I want it to be oriented like this. I want to mask off this top right part. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna resize it. I'm gonna click edit image and I'm gonna click the background remover. Now you can see that it took away too much of the background here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click background remover again and then I can start editing what it did. Now I actually want to restore the table. So I'm gonna click restore. I'm gonna make my brush nice and big. And I'm gonna paint in my image, especially this table in the back here. So you can see that this is a way we can arbitrarily mask out part of our image. Just use the background removal tool and use the erase and restore features to mask out parts of your photo. I think that will look pretty good there like that. So you can see we were able to just take out part of this edge here. From here on out, the main task is just bringing in assets and removing the background. So let's bring in our woman here, edit image, background remover. Let's also flip her so she goes the other way. I'll bring in the ice cream, edit image, background remover. It did a perfect job, let's resize it. I found some fruit roll-ups online. Found this watermelon candy that I thought was pretty interesting. Let's remove the background, zoom out. So I'm just removing the backgrounds. I'm just kind of generally getting things into place. I'm not putting it in the exact position yet. We have the TikTok logo, put it there. Now the background of our reference photo is kind of this desaturated pink, so let's add that in. So if I'm not able to click the background, what we can do is click position. And this bottom layer is for changing the color. So I'll click the color here. I'll click the color wheel. And let's give it kind of this light pink here. Pretty much everything has a glowing effect, so let's add that in. I'll add the glowing effect to the ice cream. It's black by default, but we want to give it the white glow. So I got all the glow effects going on there. We can also add a filter to the woman here in the middle. I think she looks a little desaturated there. Let's click edit image. I like Capri, but it's a little too strong here. Let's dial it down a little. There we go. I think this fruit roll-ups could be punched up a little bit too. Let's click that. Edit image. I'll go to adjust. And I'll dial up the vibrance there. Maybe the saturation too. Let's do the same thing for the ice cream. Give it some more saturation. Same thing for this watermelon. This is definitely a style where you want to be really eye-catching. So we have this viral TikTok recipes. So let's add that in. I'll add a text box. Viral TikTok recipes. I'll make it bold and I'll increase the size here. So we can go to effects. And with our text selected, we can add a shadow effect. And we can make it look white. We can increase the transparency. Increase the blur. And kind of center it behind our words there. Now, if you just do the glow effect once, the effect isn't that strong. But if we copy our text and keep pasting it, it will look stronger. So I'll press Control C here. I'll press Control V. If I align it, it's actually a little bit stronger. I'll paste it again and I can keep pasting it. So in our position, we can see I pasted it multiple times here and that made the effect stronger. I can select all of these and I can group them with Control G and give it a little bit of a bend effect. So I'll click Effects again. I'll click Curve, move it up. And I'll just bend it slightly here like that. And then we can make it a little bit smaller too. And we have one more group of text over here, fruit roll up plus ice cream. So I'll add the text, I'll click T for text. Let's resize it, make the text white. And I'll use this font Handyman. I think it looks like a pretty good handwritten font there. So now we wanna make it glow, so I'll click effects. Let's try neon here. So we have this glowing effect. Let's change the color, magenta. Let me copy and paste this. I'll take off this effect and I'll do something similar to what we did on the last one. I'll make it none. Let's make it white. And once again, this effect behind it is kind of weak. Let's copy it a bunch of times and see if that makes it stronger. So I'll go to position. This is the magenta glowing behind it. I'll just keep pasting it. And I'll line it behind it here. And if I want to change the color of all these glowing layers at the same time, I can select all of them. I'll click one, then I'll hold shift and click the other one. And I can change the color. I like this coral red here. So you can see that copying and pasting an effect on top of itself is a way we can make it look stronger. So here's our final thumbnail. So there you have three different examples of vlogging thumbnails designed in Canva. Do you want to see another thumbnail style covered in an upcoming video? Leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.